Well, uh, thank you, Jim, and uh, thank you, Madison Saviarts, for having me here. Um, I love talking to groups like this. Um, first and foremost, because you know you're 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 the donors, you're the audience members, you're the people that keep this uh, performing arts community very vibrant. And and I know uh, I can speak for a lot of other groups and say thank you because we're not an art organization without people coming to enjoy that art. And um, so I did want to come in and just talk to you a little bit about Pineapple Paul. Um, I'll tell a little bit about myself and the Madison Ballet. I, uh, even though I don't look it, I am retired. I, most people think I play football as opposed to actually ballet, being a ballet dancer. Uh, retired about 15 years ago, or actually more like 20 now. Um, it's amazing because I'm like 20. Three. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> um, I danced with uh, Pacific Northwest Ballet in Seattle and the Texas Ballet Theater in North Texas and finished as a guest artist in New York City where I retired and was very fortunate to become the artistic director 15 years ago and um, have just been amazed at all the wonderful things that um, Madison Ballet has been able to do for its entire history of over 32 years. So, um, <laughs> you know, I'm very, very proud of what we've done. And um, one of the things that I really try to look for when um, doing programming is doing interesting stuff. Um, opera, ballet uh, are not the top sellers like music and musical theater and theater. Um, so we try to be very creative in our programming to sort of expose people to a wonderful art form. And one of the ways is, is through collaboration. And when Larry Beckler, um, who's on the board of Madison Savvy Arts, approached me about this, um, I was very intrigued. Maybe not so much about Pineapple Paul because I had no idea what it was. Um, more in the fact that the idea of collaborating with Madison Sound Yards was very intriguing. Two very distinct, different disciplines coming together on a double billing for a show and putting together um, a great evening to not only expand audiences, but give audiences from each side of the fence, so to speak, something to really, uh, something to sort of chew on. Um, so we, we, we talked with um, Jim and Evan, and they've been working on this for quite a while, uh, trying to figure out what this arrangement's gonna look like. And you know, the great thing about it is, is that we all wanted to work together to do a great show, because in the end, that's really what you want. Um, so we, we have uh, put together a collaboration agreement that sort of outlines um, the relationship between the two organizations. Um, and for me, with Pineapple Paul, when I started doing, you know, listening to it and sort of understanding where I was going to go with it, I sort of did my research um, as to where it came from. And it was uh, originally done by John Cranko. Um, <laughs> and John Cranko was sort of a very innovative choreographer that um, kind of stayed true to the way uh, it was written. And I come from a very balancing New York City ballet via classical side. And so obviously, as a choreographer, I want to sort of put my own twist on it. I'm more of a minimalist. Um, if you know anything about uh, George Balanchine and New York City ballet, it's less about stories and more about movement. Um, and one of the things that it really intrigues me is obviously within the context of the music, there is some storytelling and how can you do that in a very sort of neoclassical and sort of dancey way without, you know, maybe putting hoop skirts on females. I mean, you don't want to see a ballerina in a hoop skirt, how are you going to see their legs, right? <laughs> You know, the, whole, the whole part of a ballet dancer, the most important part about a ballet dancer are the feet and the legs and the aesthetic line you create. So there's some challenges and, and like I said, that's what uh, sort of intrigues me about this project. Um, we are still in the sort of uh, development stages of it. Um, actually, 
Jim and Larry and happen to know these yarns, but uh, we have not heard from the royalty company that owns the rights to Pineapple Ball. Um, they, they've had our request for about a month now. I don't foresee um, them actually declining our request to do it. <laughs> um, but we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed about what that ticket price comes in at. Um, also, we are uh, talking about ways that we can use each other's skills to get a conductor that's going to be conducive to the ballet as well as to the singers in trial by jury. jury. Um, and the nice thing is about uh, this particular budget, I mean this production, is that I believe it's one of the first type of collaborations in this city. It will be at the Overture Center at the Capitol Theater. Um, I can't believe that I looked at all my notes and did not memorize the dates, but I believe it is the second or third week of September 2015. So uh, while we do have a ways to go, um, you'd be surprised at how quickly time passes when you're trying to mount a production of this size. Um, I will just say that as a resident of the Overture Center, um, we're the resident of the Overture Hall with the Opera, Madison Opera and the Madison Symphony. Um, and while we definitely have our place in the performing arts community, I think one of the very special things about Madison are sort of the innovative smaller organizations, Bach, uh, Bach Dance and Dynamite, Madison Savvy Arms, and some of these Lee Chow Ping Dance that do really interesting stuff and from my standpoint, do very creative stuff. So I'm enjoying getting away from Nutcracker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've only been doing that one for 32 years. <laughs> and doing something um, really, uh, really interesting and working with a great bunch of people. So I hope uh, you just keep it in the back of the head because while you've got this summer of great uh, productions to attend, you know that uh, the following year you got a, a real, real nice, spectacular collaboration. And uh, I'm sure we'll all be tapping into our skills and pocketbooks to make sure that this goes off without a hitch. So uh, once again, I want to thank the board of Madison Savvy Arts for having me. And um, I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more about this wonderful collaboration. Thank you. Thank you.